MDN TV, the podcast. Be abreast with now. Never miss a thing with MDN TV, the podcast. We love to keep you in the present with diverse goodies from secular and non secular subjects of global interest. Join us. Grab more from these series. Listen to our podcasts. The undeniable choice. It's sundown. The day has just begun. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Yes. Ha, ha. This is MDN Shows Running with the Times only on MDN TV, the podcast. And I am Major Daughter. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all our listeners, viewers around the world. Meet us in the comments. We are live there. Engage. Ask questions. Anything really. Share this podcast. Share this broadcast. Tell everybody it's happening now. Tell you what. I've got somebody today and <laughs> this excites me because she says she's an open book and we do love open books. But not only that, she says she's a channel where you can get information that will change your mindset and also change your financial life. Who doesn't want to have their mindset changed? Who doesn't want to have their minds renewed? Well, the real Alisa Apple White is my guest. And we are about to find out how do we change our mindset. So call all the business owners. Call all the business people. Call all the business leaders. This is their show right after this. MDN TV, the podcast. Be abreast with now. Never miss a thing with MDN TV, the podcast. We love to keep you in the present with diverse goodies from secular and non secular subjects of global interest. Join us. Grab more from these series. Listen to our podcasts. The undeniable the choice. The undeniable choice indeed for today is Alisa Apple White. <laughs> The name alone says it all. And April a day is all you need to keep the doctor away. Alisa, thanks a gazillion times for saying yes, availing yourself your wisdom and for sharing yourself with the world. It's you we need today to keep the troubles away. Alisa, tell the world who's Alisa Applewhite. The mic swings to you now. Come on. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I love the energy. It is so amazing. Thank so, you. My name is Alisa Appleway. I love it. Um, I am a CEO. I call myself three times because I am a CEO three times. I'm only 38 years old and I have a healthcare staffing agency. I have a, a consulting agency um, called The Real Alisa Appleway Consulting Healthcare Staffing Agency called Top of the Line Healthcare Staffing. And then we have a nonprofit for our our um, healthcare staffing agency called T-O-T-L-H-S, Heart of Gold, Inc. So what we do is we put medical professionals to work and we make sure that we pick only medical professionals that have compassion. Right. I'm really big on compassion because I've been a nurse myself for 14 years. Um, I have five kids and a husband, so I always tell people I have six kids. And um, <laughs> I just love life. Um, I know God is amazing. And once my mindset was changed, oh, man, I had to tell it. I had to tell the world, like, how to change your mindset can change your mind. And the great part about it all is we've only been in business for 18 months. And within 18 months, we have made seven figures almost three times um, with just the education that I've gained and the education that I've taught my employees. So I'm just excited about life. God is amazing. Dreams come true. Um, what else you need to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't ask you about your sixth kid. <laughs> I know the five, but the sixth one, we'll leave that for another day. You've got an exciting yes, life, exciting career, and being a nurse yourself, that is just life-changing. But here you are running a, a, a staffing agency, a staffing consulting company of medical professionals who love their jobs. How did you get started, and why, why nursing out of everything? 
I mean, you could be an actress. Oh. You could be a musician. You could be a model. You've got it all, Alisa. Well, thank you. Um, so how it started was I grew up under my grandmother, and I did a lot of stuff for her. I always found it really easy for me to take care of people. So once I got to school, it was almost like evident to the teachers and the people that God put in my way, and they just like, you need to be a nurse. I'm like, no, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. So um, I had my son at 14 years old and I needed a career choice that can help me quickly to make the income, to make sure he had a stable life and a life worth living. So I went into nursing and fell in love. I'm talking about, I've never felt like it was something that it was almost like my skin. It was so comfortable. I felt like every time I went to work, I wasn't going to work because I was either around my uncles, my grandmothers, my cousins. I can yes. always relate a patient to somebody in my family. And at the end of the day, I was doing the ultimate gift, which was giving my time, giving my knowledge to people. So I've, I've been a nurse. I started off as a certified nursing assistant and I worked myself to an LPN, then an RN. And then I traveled as a nurse for uh, about seven years. So healthcare, total 18 years. Absolutely love it. I've done everything from the emergency room to ICUs to um, med surge. So when I got from, um, when I did the COVID travel, the COVID travel is what really changed my life. I knew prior to then I wanted my own business, but I didn't know what it was in. And I traveled to all the hot spots. We went to New York, we went to Texas, I went to California to do COVID travel two years straight for 50, no, 60 to 70, 60 to 72 hours per week. And I, I kept saying, like, it's not natural, right, for healthcare professionals to see this much death. And what I've seen was people in my field, um, the field that I love so much, and, like, I just, it was just me, it was dying. Like, the hope was dying. The, um, the hope that somebody will make it, it was dying. The compassion was dying. And my staff and stuff, I felt like they were becoming rigid. And I'm just like, God, just give me a platform where I can motivate people. Because I've always been that type of nurse where if I work on a shift, people are like, oh, I want to work. Like, if Elisa works, yes, I'm working because yes. I know she got <laughs> my back. I know she's going to take care of her patients. Oh. You know, so I'm like, God, give me a larger platform where I can motivate our medical professionals to get back that compassion where I can motivate them, you know, to get back that hope that COVID I felt like took away from us. And I had a good friend um, who I graduated nursing school with and we was talking randomly. I was trying to get somebody in her CNA class and she was just like, oh, I started my staffing business and I'm just like, oh, I'm going to do it next year. Um, and she was like, well, no, you need to start it now. And I'm just like, well, why should I start it now? I'm making almost 250,000 as a travel nurse. Like, I'm fine. I love taking care of patients. I'm at the best. I'm doing what I love. And she was like, I understand that. And I respect your compassion. She's like, but you can have a bigger platform and you can make seven figures a year. And I was like, who's making seven figures a year? And when she told me she was making seven figures a year, it was a no brainer for me. I was just like, so you can be yes. home with your kids. You know, and COVID, I love taking care of patients. My two year, my daughter at the time, she was six months when I left. When I came back, she was two. So she was the last child um, that I've, I missed her walking. I missed like two years of her life. Wow. And I'm like, you know, I have mastered being a nurse. I have mastered it. I love taking care of patients. Like, it just does something to me. I'm way different when it comes to patients. But I didn't master being a parent. And that's something I want to do because these kids that we raise up, they got to go into this world and what we allow to go into the world without knowledge, without education, without the parents, it matters. And I see the drastic effect that it can take on them. So I wanted to balance. I wanted to still put people in the places where I love, where I know my patients are getting the greatest care, but at the same time be a mother. And that is why I started all of this. It was all of that that started this. Wow, you are incredible. You are changing the face of healthcare, of healthcare and nursing. You are changing the game. Look, it's not every day you can hear nurses talk like you do or healthcare professionals. What inspired you to go for your dream? Who was your role model? Um 
so that hurt my friend. She was my role model when she showed me what business I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do business. I knew it was when healthcare. And when she showed me like, you can do this. Then I connected with, um, um, my mentor who I absolutely love. Her name is Nicole Kyer. She is the queen of healthcare staffing. Like she will, give you your business and show you how to do it. But she only wants people who care. Right. So I connected with her as a mentor. I also connected with a a mentor locally, which is a very best friend of mine. Her name was Brenda Harris. She doesn't do the whole, um, she doesn't do the bright lights and all that stuff. She just personally like mentored me, um, going on. And then I connected with, uh, another mentor named La Tiffany, uh, La Tiffany Jennings. Um, and those have been my business mentors, um, to help me with the staffing agency and just help me to grow and scale and to learn the little ins and outs that you wouldn't know as a nurse, right? You would know as a business owner, because I'm just like, Oh, if I'm making this money, I'm giving everybody everything. No, no, no. That's how you grow, right? (laughs) So it's like, it's not how you grow. So they had to teach me how to change my mindset. Wow. And when I changed my mindset, I said to my friends and my family, I um I prayed to God and I told God to delete or remove, just remove anything out of my path or anyone out of my path, neither it be family or friends, that was going to stop me from finally getting my kids' generational wealth um, to just move them out the way until I can show them, hey, I did it. And then I can reach back out to them. And he cleared up all of the things that were distracting me from getting the mindset of believing that you only believe in positivity. You only believe in things that will occur. You speak what you know will exist. Like it was a whole change. And then, oh my God, this year I met the girl himself. Oh my God. When I tell you this man, his name, if nobody knows him, they better look him up. Myron Golden. It is Myron Golden. He teaches people how to make $1 million or $100,000 a day. He teaches business owners that, (laughs) right, Tom is not connected to money. And what I love about him is he gives you all these resources. You take his challenges and he just expands your mind. But as I always tell my husband, my mind is so expanded right now. I need to focus on this. (laughs) Yes. And he is the reason why I came up with the consulting business. So the consulting business is supposed to help people. And he's like, you have a gift. You need to help people like somebody helped you, but also at the same time, make a profit off of it. So he's the reason why I came up with the consulting business. And then the, the uh, nonprofit was my accountant's idea because in our program, of course, I'm a nurse. Uh, we give a lot to our medical professionals. Like we send them to the spa. We pay their uh, light bills in November. We send them um, birthday cards. We have a heart of gold gala for them once a year where we celebrate 52 nurses and five of them get $5,000 of debt assistance plus five months of credit monitoring. And that was all coming out of top of the line uh, budget. And my accountant was like, you just need to create a nonprofit so you can get some type of, see, that's my baby right there. You can yes. get some type of tax credit from the nonprofit. So um, I created a nonprofit, um, and this is how that worked. But that is how we came up with our three business. Wow. Say good wow. morning. Good morning. Little one, morning. so pretty. <laughs> good morning. I'm sure you can hear the voice, may not hear the... You may not see any face. Look. <laughs> and why She's do you love... Waking up. Yes. Why do you love people? Why do you love patients? And does anything like killer nurses exist? Are there such people? I'm just asking on the sidelines, you know, of a <laughs> conversation. Alisa? Uh-huh. So I think um, the reason why I love patients and the way I, the reason I love taking care of people is because people is one thing that doesn't change. Like, like you can't see, okay, this person is consistent this way. This person is consistent this way. They have these different changes, but 
they change so much you can learn from them. So you can always look at a patient and learn from them um, and say, okay, God, if this person's leg is about to be amputated because of this, maybe I need to help people or my community learn about this. Or if this person, the, the biggest thing that always bothers me is mental health. I was a psychiatric nurse for two years. And I really seen the inside of the mind. And if the mind wasn't strong enough or if the mind was affected, it really affected you as a person. So it's just the complexities of the mind, the complexities of humans, um, people. It, it, it just amazes me. It always keeps me in a puzzle effect where I feel like I'm learning something or I'm gaining something. And then as a nurse, it's just me being weird, right? Wound care. Like I always tell people I relate nursing to wound care because I've had patients with wounds um, that was right through the bone or right through the skin and to heal it from seeing that big hole or crater in their body to just like this little piece of skin that looks like they rubbed it off. It's just amazing that God gave me such a great skill to help to heal people, right? And like people that have heart attacks. We will have people all the time that will run into the ER and have heart attacks or drug overdoses. And for God to give me a skill to teach me what medications to use at that time and thinking quickly, it's just amazing how nurses are. And that is why I love nurse. I love it because it keeps me on my feet. I get to take care of people. And whether you pay me to do it or the hospital or not, or whether the patient is paying insurance or not, I'm still going to take care of you because at the end of the day, I say this to my nurses now. When I die and I'm in front of my maker, um, I want him to see that, hey, Alisa, this came from a genuine place. So because it came from a genuine place and I know you did it genuinely, I want him to see the truth for my heart. I don't want to have to be like, oh, God, you know, I let that patient pass away or, oh, God, I passed that medication quick and didn't tell nobody. Wow. I don't want that. I want a clear conscience. Um, when I'm standing wow. in front of my maker and it starts with making clear mental decisions. So I love patients. Like I take, I'm so weird. My husband, I stop in the middle of the road and pull over and happen to take care of patients because it's like God blessed me with the skill and I have to learn how to, you know, I, I should appreciate it. Um, I always tell my patients and I tell my staff to tell um, our patients, thank you for entrusting me with your life. People don't understand how important that is. Um, you are coming into a medical facility. You don't know if I'm an A student or a C student or if that's an A nurse or a C nurse, yes. right? You don't know, but you're entrusting these people with your lives. So they should be thanking you for entrusting you with their lives because at the end of any moment, any mistake, they can end your life. And I feel like that alone is like should be appreciated and you should be grateful as a medical professional because somebody's entrusting you to use the knowledge that you gain to save their life. So I could talk about nursing all day. I love nursing. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're breathing it. <laughs> it's like breathing to you. Bringing you the good news all day long. You, you, you are tuned in to the hottest station on the planet. On the planet. <laughs> Keep it locked. Tell us about some of the patients that you have impacted. You are good at impacting lives. So tell me what, as ones who are listening to you now, we're also being impacted, seeing someone so passionate about healthcare, about people, about nursing. This is what we want to hear. Tell us about some of the stories you have of impacting impacting patients. What was it like for you during the hardest lockdowns and the most difficult times that the whole world went through, through the pandemic? Ooh, so when we were during COVID, um, because we had so, I had so much experience with so many specialties, when they created these ICUs and these med surge units from like the waiting room or whatever space they can use in the hospital, um, God had allowed me to utilize my skills to train mass amount of nurses um, to help. So we had like one ICU in New York where um, nurses was just not coming back. Like nurses were dying and they were just not coming back because nobody knew what this virus was. And I'm just like, you know what, God, 
I have the skills, I have the knowledge, I have the years, I have to save some lives. Because what the news was depicting, I was just telling my husband, like, oh my God, like, my nurses need help. And he was just like, you can't save the world. I said, I get it, I can't save the world. But North Carolina is not bad off like there, New York. They need some people with experienced skills. Like I was told new grads were there. Um, So my goal was to go up there and give my experience Experience. And I was blessed enough to be put on a unit where the um, manager, she fell in love with me and she kept me on the unit the whole contract. And I, I was able to train new grads and teach them how to monitor and take care of patients. Um, so one unit I walked in before and we had in an ICU unit, we had 10 patients apiece because no nurse showed up. And I'm just like, what in the world? Like, how can I take care of 10 patients on this? And I'm just like, God, lead the way. I mean, I didn't sit down that whole night. Me and that nurse, we didn't wow. sit down that whole night. But we did the best we could to keep those patients alive. And when I started to see them get help with, like, more younger nurses, less experienced nurses, I'm just like, God, teach me and give me the right thing to say to them so we can keep these people alive. Because I was determined, personally, to I was determined personally not to keep putting people in body bags. Like that started to weigh on me as a nurse. Like, you know, where's my skills? What What is going on that I'm losing so many patients? We were putting about three to four patients in a body bag per day, per unit. It was just excessive. And I, I prayed to God, like, God, if you can please, you can please just let me, just let me take two. Let let two of them live, God. Let somebody live so that I know that I'm doing this for you and that I know that there is hope. And that was the biggest impact that I had. I had one patient. She ended up being on the vent for about, I'm going to say, 15 days long, way longer than she's supposed to be, right? Um, so she ended up being on the vent for 15 days, and we were be, uh, actually able to wean her off and take her off the vent. And the funniest thing about this all is I'm crying and the doctors are crying. Everybody's wow. like, oh my God, she made it. And wow. she gets off the vent and she's like, F you, y'all took me and stole me and brought me <laughs> home. I'm just like, oh, I see you delirium is still here, praise God. So we were, we were just all crying around her and she was just like, y'all stole me and da 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 And I, I'm telling you, yes. that was the best story ever. But it was like, man, she gave me hope that I can come back another day to fight this thing called COVID that I'm so glad we figured out something because um, a lot of nurses, a lot of medical professionals were just like dropping out. They were done. They were done. They were so done. So, yeah. How, how did it feel like seeing your colleagues falling down like that and just being taken out of scene? Like, and, and you, how did, where? Where did you get the courage to still come back to the very same environment, knowing that it could have been any of you, it could have been anybody, and you still stood? What does it take, really? Lessons learned? For for me, it was knowing that God knows the point. God knows the reason. And I can't say to everybody, you know, God took away your loved one as a lesson. I can't say that. I don't know what his plan was. Yes. I don't know what his reasoning was for so many people to die. I just know that Whew. I trust in him to believe that he's making a decision and that as long as I have breath in me and as long as I have breath in the skill that he gave me as his servant, I have to take care of people. I can't stop because he gave me this blessing not only to take care of patients, but to educate other nurses. So if I be like, uh-uh, I'm done, I'm quitting. I'm not just quitting on the patients. I'm quitting on the medical professionals that need me too. I'm quitting on the family members that's waiting for their loved ones to come home. I'm quitting for the quitting on them kids who's like, mommy, is you going to make it? Is my dad going to make it? So it's bigger for me. Nursing is like, it is really core to me. Um, so it's not just about the patient and what's going to happen to the patient. I always think about, okay, God put me with this patient, but if this patient don't make it 
or something happens to this patient, who is going to affect? Is it, is it going to leave one more child out where they need to go to foster homes or, you know, somewhere else? Is it going to leave a, a spouse without somebody who they've been married to for 20, 30 years? Uh, so I always try to look at the bigger picture and I never put me in it because I'm just a sacrifice. That's all. I, I'm just a sacrifice. And he blessed me with knowledge to take care of people and to run business. Sure. MDN TV, the podcast. Be abreast with now. Never miss a thing with MDN TV, the podcast. We love to keep you in the present with diverse goodies from secular and non secular subjects of global interest. Join us. Grab more from these series. Listen to our podcasts. The undeniable. Well, choice. the undeniable choice is still Alyssa Apple White. Look, thank you for staying on. And if boldness was a passing, it is you. <laughs> Tell me <laughs> if you had to start all over again tomorrow. Would you do the same thing that you're doing today? Or would you change careers? Not jobs, but careers. Alisa? So, um, I would, if I had to do it, yeah, I'm here. If I had to do I had to think about it. I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't change careers because nursing is who I am. Um, but I would get into nursing quicker. Um, I would get into the business quicker. Um, if I had to do it all over again, because as a nurse, I impact patients and the nurses that were on my unit at the time or the u- nurses that were in the hospital that I knew, you know, and I encouraged them. But as a business owner, we have 230 medical professionals now. I'm impacting 230 families. So those wow. families are impacting families, right? So I would definitely jump into business quicker because. I know now that if you change your mindset, I can make multiple people millionaires, but I just need to tap into your mind and change that mindset. Right. So, um, I would definitely still be on the same path, but, um, I would just do it way quicker. I love it. Look, five years from now, where do you see yourself? Where do you see your business? I'm so glad you asked that question. So we are <laughs> franchising. <laughs> we yes. are franchising all across the world, Jesus. Um, I have always wanted to franchise. And the reason why is because I believe that compassion, so it, it exists. I don't believe that it's gone. I just believe that a lot of people have suppressed it and they don't know how to get back to it, like medical yes. professionals. So they need top of the line of across the United States to always remind them. I say to my staff all the time, so you telling me all these complaints about what you got going on, but tell me how is this going to affect the patient? Okay. You, so you telling me you want to call out because you don't like how such and such said to you, but you calling out, how is that going to affect the patient? Are they going to die? Are their wounds not going to heal? Are they not going to eat? Are they not going to get a bath? Like I need for you to tell me, if what you're doing is really going to affect the patient and if it's going to affect the patient, then we're not a fit because you're not thinking about the patient. You're thinking about self wow. and God gave you a blessing to be a service to people. Right? So that's how I approach all my workers. They absolutely love me. And I'm very honest to say, look, there's millions of staffing agents out here. There are so many, but I only care about people who have some passion towards the patient. Because not only can my mama be a patient or my kids be a patient, but let's dig a little deeper. I can be a patient and I have been a patient and I know what it's like to sit there and wait. And when you have to go to the bathroom or when you need somebody to take care of you totally and nobody's there to take care of you Um, or they taking their time or they have an attitude because they're doing their job. I never want to make anybody feel like that. I never want to make anybody feel like that. So my whole goal is, yes, I have a staffing agency and it's profitable, but it's profitable because my principles are the same. Do you provide compassion? Do you care about what you're doing? And if you care about what you're doing, 
my clients are going to care about putting you in their building. And my clients know that I screen my medical professionals very well Mm -hmm. to have compassion, to have accountability and also knowledge because I don't want unprofessional people to be in the months of patients because you can say whatever you want to say in front of me. But when you're in that room with that patient, what are you saying to that patient? That bothers me, right? That bothers me to my core. So I need to know that you're effective. I need to know that you're knowledgeable and I need to know that you have compassion and we have people to check on our nurses and we tell our nurses this, you are always checked on because sometimes we can come out of pocket and you might need to be checked right back into pocket to get back on the vision and the goal. Nursing is, it can be frustrating sometimes. Um, depending on the medical professionals, depending on a doctor specifically, like it can be stressful sometimes, but I'm here as an employer to say, Hey, let's get back to the vision. Let's stop thinking about everything else and get back to the vision. Because once your vision is pure, everything else in life is going to fall. Everything, money, desires, materialistic stuff. If you are pure in what you are doing, it's going to fall. So, I try to keep people on the vision, and that that is how I believe I'm very, very successful in less than this amount of years. Wow, wow, wow. This show comes to an end, but um, the conversation doesn't have to wear the tail end, but the conversation should continue, and it ought to continue. Where can our listeners find out more about you? Where can our viewers get to Learn more about you, Alisa. So you can go to my YouTube channel, um, The Real Alisa Applewhite. Um, we have educational videos that we drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday and Fridays. And then we are having a five-day challenge for healthcare staffing owners or business owners who can't get clients to help them learn how to get clients. And that will be December 26th uh, through the 30th of December of this year. Um, We will be dropping that website on the YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, um, The Real Elisa Applewhite. You can follow me on TikTok, The Real Elisa Applewhite, and also on Instagram, The Real Elisa Applewhite. So I try to keep it as basic as I could um, (laughs) because I am The Real Elisa Applewhite. There's no other me. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I agree with What will be your parting shots, your last word? I mean, we have had such a wonderful time. <laughs> yes, what will, we have. What will be your last words to everybody listening, watching? Anyone who will hear this later, what will you say to them? Elisa? I would say if you are interested in building a business, the first thing that comes to change is the mindset. And unless you fix your mindset, everything you desire will not come back. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, the real Alisa Applewhite. Check it out on TikTok. Check it out on uh, on Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. There's only one, the real Alisa Applewhite. You won't regret it. I promise you to all our listeners and viewers around the world. Well done. MDN Talk Radio. The mic swings to you. At MDN Talk Radio, the conversation is upbeat with life-enhancing chats moderated by personalities that matter. Exclusive conversations to keep our radio community interactive is with you now. Log on from the comfort of your couch or take us along in your palm as you go. Hear us. The undeniable choice. Thanks a gazillion times, Alisa, to you and yourself. You are welcome. You are so welcome. (laughs) Thank you for giving me the platform. I appreciate this. Um Bringing you the good news all day long. You, you, You are tuned in to the hottest station on the planet. On the planet. Keep it locked. 